Hi and welcome to another Type with Me. This week I want to talk about apply sequences and triversals within functional programming TypeScript. So let's take a look at what it is. So the app operator is the basics of applicable applications, right? And it is the first thing to move into sequential and traversal uh, programming. So for that, we are going to start also with that. So I'm going to remove what we saw last week. All right. And then we are going to start with something like this. We have a function and a function gets a key, a value and a flush, right? So we can change that function into a currying function, right? And how can we very easily do that? And I'm really a fan of that. That's uh, something like this, right? We can do write C equals, then we can have something like key, which takes a string. And then we have an arrow function and then we have another function there which will be value string, right? Then we will have another function, which will be flush, and then boolean. And then of course, we will do something like the following thing, which will be just write key value and flush, right? So. This makes it a little bit more easier to construct certain things. So how can we now use write C? Well, we can use it like this. We can say, okay, we want to have write C key. Okay, that's the first one. Then we can say, okay, I want to have a value out of that, that other function. And then I want to set the true, right? So that's how we can call this one, which is great. So now how are we going to use that? within um, our functional programming. Well, we can do that by just say here, function, then here, I want to have type, right? And then if you wanna use something like this, well, you will see it will not work. It will just complain because it's not working from right to left, but it's working from left to right. So this is not quite working. So to make this working, we need to just tweak this a little bit to have it like this, right? And then we can very easily, um, yeah, make, make, make it work. So we just need to pipe everything into another pipe and another pipe, we need to pipe it into another pipe and then of course we have our right C here. So, but it's very annoying to add always a pipe and another pipe and another pipe and another pipe. It's just not feeling really good, right? So for that we have a solution and that solution is app or apply. So when you're going to do that, you'll see that it's much easier to write that down. So we will get something like this, right? We have write and write is a piping a function into a value. And with app, we are doing just that. We piping that function into a value. And then we get another function back and we're piping that function into a value. We get another function back and we're piping that value into a function. We get another function back and so on until we get to the right method is here. The right method, right? So that's basically it. It's really powerful. So in essence, uh, app or apply makes it easier for, for us to curry functions into each other, right? Until we get to the correct function itself. So to assist us with uh, querying functions, this is really the way to go. And we are still keeping the right order because it's much easier for us to write to, to read something like write, and then we have the key, then we have the value, and then we have true. This is just the other way around, right? Because we start them from flush, then value, and then key, 
so it's hard for us to 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 read it too right so in that opinion it's for me very powerful and great tool to use also app is very useful when you have uh, functions and values that are not playing very well together for example options or either or other kind of uh, things within the functional programming typescript when you want to solve it well basically you will end up using app all right so that's a really great thing to do all right so um let's clear this for a moment and we uh, i'm going to show you something like this right we have something like a which is an option b is also an option and then you have foo which is just a function which takes a number and a string and it returns a boolean right of course here you see already a problem right because we want to have a number but we will get an option number here we will have a string but we have an option string right and we can solve this already with the following thing we can use chain and map for that but like you see here this is really uh, cumbersome right this is really it, it's hard to read right <laughs> for me it's, it's it's very hard to read and of course at the end we solve it here with foo but i think there are better solutions for this and of course if we have a c uh, parameter here it's even worse than that right so it doesn't scale with more parameters on that it's ugly it's confusing so let's go on with our story so just create a foo c which is a querying function uh for that so we have here our at one one uh, part number and then we have b uh the other one right and then we can just execute foo a comma b which is great because we saw it before queuing functions last thing that we need to do is to put the foo c into the option uh get hood right of course i need to import foo um, import pipe here so i'm going to do that from the slash lip slash function all right here we go so what we have here is we have here foo c and we need to dump it into a option uh, Korean function, right? So you're just gonna convert that. And then of course we can very easily use that by just saying, okay, we want to have here the first one. Yeah? So the foo C, we need to go into um, the apply function, right? And then again with the second parameter we can do the same so if we have here uh, a third or fourth parameter it's very easily we can just do o dot off through c comma and then we have here our option our second option and then we can have a third the fourth fifth sixth it's much better and easier to read than this line right awesome i think so as well all right so we can very easily extend it a little bit for example having a foo which takes a boolean and then of course we can have something like foo option and what we saw already before that's this one this line here and then we can very easily do pipe o of bar and then o dot app and then we provide the foo option here right so that's great but of course uh, app is very boring right it's it's annoying that we need to query our function there so that we all, always need to create something like foo c uh, to to go to foo right that's very annoying in my opinion and of course uh, we need to reverse also the order a little bit which is also not too intuitive uh, there so these are two parts that are uh, for me disadvantages in this approach but again uh, if you look into the first line here chain and map it's more clear and, and easier to read and write when we have this kind of flow right 
So in theory, this is nice, but you will see that uh, a lot of people are using sequences instead. Uh, so let's go on and move towards sequences. A very common use case is, for example, an array of options, and you want to convert it into an option of just an array, right? Boom. But that's something that you can do with sequences. So here we have an array, right? And we just, with the map function, we convert it into o.off, and the o.off will return just uh, option one, option two, and option three as a, an object here. And then you'll see here that we have just o option number, which is an array, right? And we want to convert it into option of number array type, right? So we can very easily do that with just the uh, a dot array dot sequence, where we have here an o dot option um, into it, and of course we add here the array, and then he converts it into option number array. So if we say here what a, then you will see here that we have that kind of typing, right? So that's that's great. It's cool. Um, we can take it a little bit further by going on to the sequence T. It's just a little bit uh, extra functionality that you will have within the sequence T, where you can provide some extra arguments, rest uh, parameters into a sequence. So we have two extra things with it, with sequence, sequence T and sequence S. So one of the things here is that sequence T and sequence S are things of the apply uh, library within functional uh, uh, programming TypeScript. So we saw the app, well, uh, it has some kind of flavor into that. So keep that in mind. So sequence T, what does it do? Well, it takes one array, the option one, two, three, that we also have right here. And we have here a second array, ASDF, right? And what it will do is he will just combine it. And we have an option which will have a number and a string, right? So and then we can do something magically like the following. We can have a function foo and we can have a function bar, right? And then of course here we have our sequence t where we have an option one, two, three, which is our number. And then we have of course our string, right? So he creates here um, an option number comma swing, right? And these are the arguments that we have right here. We can execute it then towards foo. So in foo, we have here a number and we have here a string. And what comes out of that one, we can pass it through par because of course we have a boolean out here. And then out of that bar function, we can have an object, right? So something else that we can use is sequence S. So for sequence S, uh, that will be used with the eater uh, functionality. So for example, we have here a register input, which has an email and a password, right? And we have here our validation uh, methods, where we have validate email, we have validate password, and we have register, right? So of course, first of all, we want to validate our email, then we want to validate our password, and then we want to register. And out of validate email and out of validate password, you can have an error or just the right string of the email. Here also, out of the validate password, we can have either an error or a string. And then of course, we want to register everything uh, afterwards at the end. So for that, we want to say, okay, uh, we have a sequence S, which can be 
on type A either. And we want to pass an email, validate email, which will be here, our email address. And of course, we have our passwords, which can be validate password, right? So we, we can execute these ones in parallel and then let's come them back together with the register method right here. So that's really powerful as well. And of course, within the e.map register, we can very easily add an input and that input can be of type register, which will be um, used right here with email and password and so on. So I think you really feel what, 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 what the use cases are and how powerful it will be when you are creating, for example, a validation strategy into your React.js application or into your Vue.js application, or even maybe if you want to use it into Angular, you can also do that. Uh, it's, it's also powerful there. Sometimes not everything comes uh, in, 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 in the right sequence, right? So, and then it's very hard to use the sequence uh, there. So in that case, you need to use a dot traverse. And for one of the, the examples here is the uh, task either. So if you want to have different files, the, these different files com, uh, come into your application asynchronously. And because they are coming asynchronously to your application, you are not sure that when you get a certain part uh, uh, out of there and for that uh, sequence will not work but you will need to use traverse right so keep that in, in mind that that is the next step that you can do can do when you are fetching stuff from the internet via an api or you are reading in some files from from a disk for example a blob or something like that well, then you need to use the a dot traverse like you see it here. And then when you have everything there, you can just go to the method get part where you compute everything over to that. So I know I covered a lot into this video. Maybe certain things are very complex. I hope you learned something out of it. I hope it's very useful that you're going to apply something to your application. In my opinion, sequence as is something very powerful. If you want to do validation around a lot of options and a lot, a lot of uh, input values uh, on a form, you can use that and get something out of it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Uh, and also give this a thumbs up if you liked this video. See you next time. Bye!